Hello everybody and welcome back to the Biff Rugby League Podcast. It's episode 12 and we're mixing things up a little bit today. We're going to have a little bit of a debate about the England World Cup team and what our squad's going to look like uh, come, uh, is it, I think it's October time. Um, but before we get into that, I'd just like to apologise on behalf of myself, Robin and Toby. We would like to apologise to the West Wales Raiders. Um... This year, we have said you are the worst team in League One, the worst professional team in Rugby League. We were proven wrong on the weekend when you went out there and you beat Cornwall in Cornwall, made sure that they didn't score any points, and you left London Scholars lying bottom of League One. Um, So on that note, you are now no longer the worst team in professional Rugby League. That sits with London Scholars. So... Until London Scholars beat Cornwall or even yourself to West Wales, they are that now the worst professional team in, in rugby league, um, alongside probably Cornwall. Um, on a serious, on a more serious note, though, and a little bit of a, a sort of a sad one, we'd like to pass our condolences on to the family of Maurice Lindsay and all those that knew him. The former rugby league chief executive uh, passed away at the age of eighty-one. The mastermind of what behind Wigan's revival in the 1980s, heavily involved in the formation of Super League back in 1996, team manager of Great Britain in the early 90s, just just steered the Northern Hemisphere Rugby League into a totally new era, worked with Rupert Murdoch's Sky, he just won everything with Wigan from Challenge Cups to League titles and even the World Sevens, which is absolutely ridiculous, brought in stupid amounts of talent from Australia and New Zealand, including Dean Bell, Gene Miles, Brett Kenny, British talent including Martin Afire, Joe Lydon, Ellery Hanley, and just sort of he he sort of made Wigan the team that we remember from the eighties into the nineties and into the noughties, and they've not they've they've kind of just stayed the same kind of Wigan ever since. So rest in peace to Maurice Lindsay. Condolences to him and his family. Boys, how how are we? How have we been the last week? Yeah, I've not been too bad. Um, I must say, like quickly for anyone watching us, uh, I'm shamefully wearing a rugby union shirt on a rugby league podcast. Uh, it's it's because I have a temperamental relationship with the washing machine, and by that I mean there isn't any other t-shirts to wear that are currently dried. Um, so I am regrettably in a rugby union top, albeit a Wales rugby union top, which I guess makes it a little bit more acceptable, um, as we don't really class rugby league as being in South Wales yet. Um, but um, despite your lovely opening spiel, but yeah, um, I'm, I'm not bad, thanks. Uh, yourself, Robin, how, how have you been trying to pick your oh, England I feel squad? Like I'm gonna have to just like add another apology for the camera, <laughs> apologizing for things. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I've been all right. I've been I've been a bit ill, so I've had quite a quiet week, but um, feeling feeling better now. I'm in front of you two guys talking about rugby league, and that's exactly what we'll have to hear. It's sort of our this is our kind of thing, isn't it? We just sort of escape from reality to talk about the sport that we love, and it's gonna. It might get a little bit heated today. We might not be friends at the end of this hour, potentially hour and a half long episode. Um, with I think it's just under two hundred days to go until the World Cup kicks off in Newcastle. We are going to go through each 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 individual seventeen for the World Cup opener, or our strongest World Cup sort of seventeen. And then using those three seventeens, we'll sort of create our twenty-three man squad or twenty-four man squad. I think it is for the World Cup. So we'll kick. We may as well kick straight off. We're going to go with fullback, and I think, I think with this is this is going to be quite an easy one. I mean, for me, Sam Tompkins as captain, as Sean Wayne's captain, he has to go into that that role at fullback, does he not? Yeah, I uh, I picked Tompkins. I, I'm looking at Toby's smile, but yeah, I definitely picked Tompkins. He's been the best fullback in the comp for uh, a couple of years, and his and his career's been awesome. So you know he's got the, he's got the experience. He's played in the big games, um, and yeah, I, I'm not going just because Sean Wayne's picked him as captain because I don't like Sean Wayne at the moment, <laughs> and I don't I don't so not just for that reason. Genuinely, based on Tompkins' ability. And and how I fit the rest of the squad around him, it, I'm picking him up fullback. Toby, you you've not gone to attack with Sam Tompkins, have you? No, I haven't. <laughs> um, 
I mean, first of all, I guess I just want to make the distinction um, that we had we made a rule that we've got to pick from Sean Wayne's training squad, uh, NRL English players, and we're allowed one wild card who's not in either of those two uh, categories, um, just to try and keep it more realistic. Because I think I would have actually had quite a few players who aren't in either of those if we weren't have if we didn't sit by those. <laughs> we're sort of getting far away from a realistic squad, I think. But yeah, I didn't. So I think in modern rugby league, we're seeing that the like, you know explosive. Um, the ability of fullbacks is is becoming quite crucial to being able to win games, and I think we see that with like Tom Trevojevic, with James Tedesco, um, with Latrell Mitchell now. Um, and for that reason, I've chose Jack Wellsby as my fullback. Um, and I think I put in the group chat that I might try and bombard you with stats in this. So <laughs> you did. Jack Wellsby in Super League this year is the third uh, most assisting try assisting fullback behind Jake Connor and Two Dollar here. He's the Third um, amongst fullbacks for my, ex, my uh, spreadsheet's messing up, but he's the third amongst fullbacks for tackle busts behind Jai Field and Tuilola here, and he's the second among fullbacks for try scoring. What I will say, I think this is the reason why I'm, I, can, I can accept Sam Tompkins, is Jack Wellsby leagues the lead in errors. He's made 21 errors this year, um, which isn't very, Ooh. which isn't sort of a good selling point for him. But in terms of being able to break through. Um, opposition's lines um, and then hand the ball off to some of his Saints teammates who may or may not be <laughs> in the squad um, I really just think that he's potentially um, a better attacking weapon and there, I, I will specify that because later on I've chosen sort of a few more defensive options to sort of counteract um, that the fact that I haven't got Sam Tompkins in the team but, oh well I have but not here but yeah Anyway, um, so that's that's why I, I, I want um, Jack Wellsby. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got I've got Wellsby in my team, but just not at fullback. And I, I think Robin was we were about to say the same thing. Exactly the same thing, and depending how the tournament's going, depending because we've not really seen Wellsby in this sort of like arena. So he, he for me, I've I've got him in the squad, and if he starts playing better than Tomkins, or maybe Tomkins has got an injury, you know, he's getting on a bit. I absolutely well for these man my backup option. <laughs> but I think the, the experience of Tonkins and and his you know, it's a safe option, he's a great player, he's gonna lead the team from, from the back. And that's why I've picked Tonkins of Wellsby. But that was my second option. So yeah. Well. Se- seeing as we've all got Wellsby in the squad somewhere, I think we'd agree that Tompkins is gonna start at full back just as a as a whole. I think that's probably the most realistic realistic one there and I think Toby you're probably going to nod your head and, and agree on that one because we've got Wellsby in there and we can with, with his versatility you can kind of agree that we, he'd probably be better off in other positions wingers now I've, I've separated into my mind right and left you two might may not have done this um, so I'm just going to name them I think the one off camera we said well, I think we're all going to agree on one and then there might be a second one so the one I think we're all going to agree on and if I'm wrong then I'll be quite shocked it's, it's got to be Tommy Makinson isn't it yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree with Tommy Makinson. Um, time for a stat attack again, but he's uh, <laughs> drawing attention to the fact that I've got these stat attacks after this. Um, but he's the second amongst wingers for try scoring in Super League. He's the second in the whole league for clean breaks behind only Jai Field. Um, and he is the 14th um, in the league for his average metres gain. So, you know, you think that that includes all players. He's going to be able to bring the ball out from... Uh, England's own half, he's going to be able to score tries, and yeah, he's going to be able to break through opposition lines from the wing as well, which is really sort of the hat trick of things you want your winger to be able to do at this at the international level. So I think it's I think Tommy Mason has to be in the squad. Yeah, Robin, is he yes. the, is he the one and one that you've agreed with us? So uh, he's not, but. You know, I, I'm not so I'm not certain on this. I mean, obviously Tommy Makers is the right is the right call, but the the only the only reason that I'm hesitant is because it's very easy to look at his stats and pick him. But the reality is, he's he's on the wing of an amazing Saints side. So if he wasn't getting these stats, that would be a concern. So you know, if he was doing this, like look at Ken Seo at Salford, like teams towards the bottom of the table, and he's uh, top try scorer this year. Yeah, you've got. Ryan Hall is doing pretty well at a, not a great Hull KR side. And I know he's, I, I agree, they're not better players. But it's just, if when I look at the squad that I'm putting together, I'm not picking, I've decided not to pick the best player in each position. 
and, and think about the team as a whole. And so for me, for the team that I've picked, I want big wingers. I want, and Tommy Makinson is a skillful, quick player, but he's also very light. And I'm, I'm looking at McGilvray Hall, um, Dominic Young, and thinking there's potential there. I'm also thinking about using Tom Johnstone as a wild card. He's a big, he's a big player, and, and obviously he's come back from an injury, and you know, he's not, he's not the, the, the best version of himself yet, but he's still got five months to get there. So I'm actually not sure about wingers. I'm willing to, I'm willing to go Makinson because there's, there's no better alternative. But if we had a, a Daniel Tupo style player or a Ryan Hall in his prime that would be more the style of winger that I think we would benefit most from at the World Cup. But with what we've got, I'm, I'll, I'll go making some too. Yeah, you, you mentioned Jermaine McGilvray, and I'll, he's my other winger. Um, it was I was, t- I was tied between him and Dom Young here, and just jumping between the two of them, it's like, do you go with someone who's young and has shown that he can do it at the NRL, but is still only, is less than 10, I think less than 10 games into his like senior career, or do you go with a Jermaine McGilvray that is sort of revitalised at Huddersfield, who are up there at the top of the league? He's playing well. He's def- he's attacking well. He's defending well. He's got he hasn't got the best of players inside him in terms of sort of if you look at the level of centres in the world of rugby league, Ricky Latelli is not one of the best in rugby league. He's one of the best probably that he could have inside him because there isn't a lot of good rugby league uh, like major centres that Huddersfield would be able to get. But there's better options out there. Like you said, if you Tommy Makinson isn't is playing well because he's got the players inside him. Jermaine McGilvray is playing well when he hasn't necessarily got those players inside him. So for me, he's my second winger. Are either of you two going to pick another one to go alongside? Yeah, I've used my wild card for this, and this is—I'm quite scared to say this because I imagine oh. this is my one I'm gonna get. Whoa! <laughs> but I've used my wild card for my second winger, and the reason being is, well, been making so I have thought only about scoring tries, and it was time for me now to go. How, how you know? How are we going to defend? And this is really important for the rest of the other eleven players in this thirteen. It's really important to me that um, that defence is there because the 2017 World Cup was won by an ankle tap, um, and. So I've really focused on defence here. So the player that I've picked, he's he's scored eight tries this season, which many wingers have. Ryan Hall's one of the players who's scored eight tries this year, just for example. He's got the second lowest amount of missed, ta- missed tackles amongst wingers with six or more tries, second only to Greg Eden. Mm-hmm. And... On this note, you should be picking Greg Eden, mate. Like... Uh, <laughs> and... He's got the lowest amount of errors amongst the same pool of wingers with six or more tries. Now, does, do either of you want to guess who I've picked before I have to say his name out loud? Go for it. I don't, I go for it. I've gone for Josh Charnley. Oh, mate, come on. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> oh, my days. Oh, I don't, I honestly, I honestly, I don't know if I can back that. I genuinely don't know if I can back that. I know you've got the stats to back that up, but. <laughs> I've picked a defensive winger in a not great Warrington side, which also could mean that he's just nowhere near the player to make the tackle, which is why he's <laughs> he can't miss them. He's probably made the tackle before in the middle of the park and then not been able to get back over to his edge. Robin, Rob, basically Robin, Robin here, it's up to you. You either pick Josh Charnley or you pick Jermaine McGilfrey. If you pick Josh Charnley, we don't have, we do not have a, we do, that's our wild card done if you pick Josh Charnley. Can I just, can I just say as well um, that like in terms of other wingers that I've thought about in like using the wild card with here, um, I think there was like Matty Ashton um, was, was one of the players who's had a very good season so far. Um, out on the wing, uh, a couple of other players whose names evade me. Darnell McIntosh, I think, is a player who sort of was in amongst the mix. Yeah. So yeah. there's a couple more options. But yeah, I, I chose Josh Charlie purely because statistically, he's going to stop us from con- stop us stop England and Wales stop England from conceding. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, well, Toby, <laughs> all the all the all the players that you. Listed in the build-up to that decision, <laughs> were, were a better call. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Eden, Ryan Hall, 
I would pick them any day over Josh Charney. And Josh Charney, like you say, does a good job for Warrington. But I think the stats are misleading you a little bit there, you know. Josh Charney, he's not in his prime. Like, we've seen better Josh Charney and he still didn't make it into the England squad over yeah. Jimmy McGovern and Ryan Hall. So, I can't, I can't back that. Um, McGilvery, he, he's sort of, he's a, he's a weird player. He's, he's great and he seems to, like, really excel when he's in big games. But, I mean, how old is he now? You know, he must be one of the older wingers out there. The, and the, Ryan Hall. Yeah, and, and that's one of the reasons I haven't gone for Ryan Hall, mainly because, yes, he's sort of re-hit form, but mm. he isn't... I don't think he's Jermaine McGilvray, if that makes... Do you know what I mean? I don't really know how to yeah. explain it. Like, Jermaine McGilvray does stand out when he plays in those bigger games. He was... Phenomenal in the last World Cup. He's been phenomenal for Huddersfield for plenty of years. Ryan Hall has been in and out and in and out of form quite a lot. McGilvray's 34. This is his last chance to show us. Like the World Cup. He, I think he's in the squad. And I think so is Dom Young. And I think McGilvray gets the nod over Dom Young. But this is if he if he doesn't start well, uh, it's no surprise to me that Dom Young will, will, be, will move up into that, into that right wing spot and replace him. But it, that does depend on Dom Young's season. McGilvray is probably the second best winger England have got behind Tommy Makinson in terms of reliability, and that's probably the reason he's there is because he's reliable. Yeah, and he and he for me personally for the style that I want to see, he fits the bill. You know, he's, he's a big winger. Yeah, he's going to be able to take the ball um, on the on the off the kick and get good setters up for a good yeah. start to the set. All these things, so I like him, but I'm just tempted by Dom Young. You know, he's, he's a yeah. younger version of Jermaine McGilvray, and he's playing in the NRL versus in the Super League. It makes a difference. So it's a gamble. Do you know, it's a gamble, but I, I'm leaning more towards Dom Young on potential. And obviously, in five months' time, he might have he might have a pretty poor season in the NRL. Like, you know, he's so untested that we really What's don't that? know. But um, I well, think I'll, I'll I'll back I'll go McGilvery because I think he's t- he's tried and tested and like you said this is his last World Cup. Dom Young's got plenty of other shots. Jim McGilvery's been there. The Aussies respect him. Let's be honest, they yeah. probably don't respect Ryan Hall after his NRL <laughs> uh, performances. So, no, yeah, probably not. I think I'm going to pick McGilvery over Josh Chanley. Um. Quick question for you, Toby. If if I'll give I'll give Toby this one. Wing, winger number three for you, Toby. I think, and I think it's only fair, Robin, that we give him this option. Is it is it is it Dom Young or is it Josh Charnley for your winger number three? This is part of our our squad. We're only allowed one world. Pardon? Well, my winger number three needs to be a sort of hybrid between defence and um, defence and attack, and uh, it's got to be Josh Charnley. I think some more stats. And um, based on actually when I when I filled out when I, I filled out a squad, but I obviously don't plan on arguing for places eighteen to twenty four. But my third choice winger would actually be Ash Handley. So whoa, whoa, whoa! You're throwing so many different names out here. Jesus, you've done some serious stats. I've, I've given no, I've, I've given you, the, I've given you the option of the winger number three, and and that's fine. I'm happy to put Handley in there as the third winger, just because that was that's that sort of. Yeah, but between Dom and Josh Charnley, Dom Young is tackling at 79, making 79% of his tackles, so he misses 20% of his tackles uh, in the NRL, and that's a concern for me at the moment, but I do think that he's probably got a bigger future than... Yeah, he has. Uh, yeah, and I mean, so, a, and a, World Cup, a World Cup with Jamaica is not going to do him any harm, is it? Like You've seen how a World Cup for a young player can go back in 2013, I mean, you had James Tedesco back then for Italy, so um, who... Who would like to take the centres first? I will let one of you two go. I, I want to do this one because this, this decision on the two centres for me was re- really important to decide the whole the team as a whole. This is why I wanted some, some big punchy wingers. So I've gone, I've, I've gone with Herbie Farnworth because I like what he's doing at Brisbane. I think he's a threat. He's experienced in, in the NRL. So he's going to be um, not phased by the Australians and the Kiwis, um, and I think he's just he's on form. You know, it feels like there's momentum behind him at the moment. And in my second centre, I've actually I I hate when when coaches do this, but I'm picking a fullback at centre 
I'm following the the blues. <laughs> they, they had an excuse. And this depends on how the season goes. It does depend on how the season goes. But I'm picking Zach Hardacre as the other centre. I think his running game is great. He's, you know, he can tackle. You know, he's a full back, so he can tackle. Um, and I think he's just a bit bigger and a, and he's going to be able to handle the strength of the Aussies a bit better than the likes of uh, Percival and Gildart. So that's why I picked those two as my centres. Uh, and why? I, and because, you know, Zach's got that sort of ball-playing ability as well. So I, I, I'm trusting that in the centre, he's going to be able to give um, his winger ball in space. Or, you know, but he's also got that running option as well. So I quite like him in yeah. the centre, even though it's not his, his number one position. Yeah. Um, Toby, is that a centre pairing that you can accept? Uh, I, can, I can accept it. I think statistically, Zach Hardacre actually is right in the conversation. Uh, I, have, I didn't pick him, and the reason I didn't pick him is because of the noise he's been creating recently. Mm. Uh, he's decided to leave a winning Wigan to go be a fullback again at a crap Leeds. Um, I think his game on the weekend wasn't particularly special, and he's got a lot of sort of stick online for it, um, for sort of his decision to to switch to Leeds and. And yeah, I just and I just don't think you can trust him to be a sort of a valuable squad member. I think, you know, you'd find him, you'd end up with him going on a night out a day before or something. Just yeah. something's going to happen with him that, and I, and I just think that it, he's become like I just didn't even think about him. I sort of looked at his stats yeah. and I went, you know what though? Like, yeah, he was he's performed really well at Wigan at, in the centres for the first ten games of the season, and like I completely understand. He's probably a better centre option than one of the two centres I've picked. Um, but I've agreed with Robin and picked Herbie Farmworth. Um, when you compare all the centres in the um, in Sean Wayne's training squad and uh, to Herbie Farmworth, Herbie Farmworth playing in the NRL, which I think we'd probably agree is a, yeah. a slightly better standard, 100%. has the second highest amount of tackle, like percentage, highest tackle percentage. So it's only Jake Wardle who's made who makes a high percentage of his tackles. Wow. Jake Wardle's only played four games this year. Yeah, and so th- that's that's not enough to really go off in terms of oh that he's ready for a World Cup. I mean, he also scored six tries in the NRL this season. But other centres with six tries include Joey Manu and Justin Owen. And if I said to you one of those two was available for England, they're in the squad. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And then yeah, so I think that this season's really been great for. Uh, Herbie Farmworth and just mention Olam and, Ma- and Manu. He actually ta- he's got a higher tackle percentage than both of those two players as well. So he really does look like he's a star. Yeah, the and he, he's he the yeah. You compare him to the Herbie, Herbie Farmworth that we saw play quite a lot for Brisbane last year. He's he's got that little bit bigger as well. He is he's just a bit more solid. Whether when he's got the ball in his hand, he's solid in defence. He's linking up perfectly well with some of the top quality players over in the NRL. And he's going to bring, with this new Brisbane like we've seen, like compared to the last two seasons, this this not even brand new. It's it's a new Brisbane mentality, and to bring a winning mentality, maybe not a league winning mentality, but a, a club winning mentality into an England side with Sean Wayne in charge, being the next like being our next best thing. I'm just hoping we all hope. I think he stays injury free. I and mean, we've all picked him, and he's going to go in at centre. Toby, who's your who's your other centre in that in that sense? Yeah, so I struggled with this. There was no option I was actually completely sold on, and obviously yeah. Zach Arden is someone I pushed aside for reasons outside of his ability. And I'm hoping that maybe you're going to come through and save me with a Jack Wellsby call. But um, I've gone for Oliver Gilbert. Um, in a weak West Tigers team, he's made five line breaks and fourteen tackles. Whoa, 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 whoa. Say that again. A weak West No, 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 no. Say that again. What again now? Just the West Tigers bit. Don't worry about the weak bit, mate. Just, we are, we're just the West Tigers team. We've had, we've won twice at the start of the season. We're not weak anymore. We are better, we're better than we have, we're better, we're better than we've been in the last three seasons. So, please, don't call us weak. Don't upset in me. West Tigers team, yeah, we <laughs> Five line breaks and 14 tackle breaks. Um, he's, that he's he's you know he he's been sort of up and down he's been dropped a little bit for West Tigers but he's managed to maintain an 87 percent tackle um, percentage which actually scores him quite favourably if you compare him to sort of the Super League 
players, or compared to the other England option, it's only again Wardle Farmworth and then Reese Lyne who sort of can compete for that defensive um, sort of award. Um, and then he's at, yeah, and then he's made more breaks in less games, like more line breaks and tackle breaks than Reese Lyne in less games um, in the NRL. So I think that he he's my other option. But I think, as I say, there's two players who I think I probably would take over in terms of their ability that. I'm, that I've sort of been, well, there's reasons why they're not in my centre option, but yeah. Yeah, and they, I'll agree. That's the reason Zach Carter like, didn't make my squad. I mean, he he's one of those versatile players again that can sort of he can play fullback. You can put him on the wing. You can play him at centre, and he gives you that versatility and that reliability on the field. It it is his off the field issues, whether it be under his own sort of idiocy that we've seen in the past or to do with his, his health in with having his recent um, seizure, which I don't think was by any fault of his own. I think that was just a natural thing. And it was good to see him back out on the pitch on, on the weekend. And I do hope that he returns to the Zach Hardacre of old and looks after himself off the field. The, un, the unreliability of him not being able to control himself before a big game has happened before. And if England do get to a World Cup final and he's played well under all of it, I don't want him going out the night before and mess, or even two nights before missing a club meeting and him being the reason that we have to select, I don't know, Reese Lynn in the centres if he's the third centre that Sean Wayne picks. And because I would rather have Hardacre and Farmworth in there and maybe even Wellsby there than than, than um, Reese Lynn. And that, that's not a knock to Reese Lynn, that's just the quality of the centres we've got. And it was a difficult selection. Um, to myself, I've gone with Farmworth and Gildart, and I think the fact we've all gone for Farmworth shows that we trust in his abilities for such a young lad. And two out of three of us have gone for Gildart, and I'm sorry, Robin, he, this is one where. Can I wait? What, what <laughs> is this? Was like Hardacre before we lock him away? Yeah, yeah, we're not we're not locking him away. I just don't think he starts. Yeah, and I, I can totally see the reasons why. And to be honest, I was so behind that cast team, and I felt the heartache of that grand final. No, hundred percent after what Hardacre did. So, you know, and he's and he's done it since. He's done it several times since. And the off-field issues are definitely part of his game. But the reason the reason I were, I'm willing to take the risk is because I think, if we're honest, we're not as strong an England side as we have been in other years. This, you know, we've not got yeah. that sort of easy pick in every position, star players. We've got a few great players, but we're not all round as good a team as we were compared to the other nations in, say, like 2013. Yeah. So, I, I to beat Australia, and that's the key, we've got to beat Australia. We're not going to do it if we just pick safe options. You know what I mean? Gilbert yeah. can play in the NRL and his stats are reasonable, He's but he hasn't got it in him to truly win a game. He's not got that moment in him. Or I've not seen it yet. You know, he's, he's a great yeah. player, but I think toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Australians, he's going to lose nine out of ten times. Zach Hardacre, has, he's a maverick. He's a bit different. He's outside of the box. And you, you take a risk on him, and it might go terribly wrong, but if it goes right, and it, I still feel like there's a greater chance of it going right than if you pick a guild art. But when you've got him on form, he is he's capable of getting under the skin of the Aussies and disrupting the game, playing it slightly different. Because if it, all things go the way they're expected, Australia will win every single time. We've got to do something a bit different. We've got to go against the grain. And that's exactly what Hardacre could bring. So that, that's my general philosophy for the picks that I've made are we've got to be different to the Aussies. We've got to be awkward and unconventional because we're not going to win if we just pick the safe option every time. But you can still feel yeah. that because he's reasonable. If we, talk, if we talk about unconventional then and full-backs at centre, is there perhaps a chance, cause obviously this is someone who I've, I've put in my like wild cards I couldn't have, but is there a Jake Connor shout which comes out? No, 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 no way. Like, he is, he can't, he can't defend. And I think that for someone who has to defend as a, as a fullback, he can't do it. Yes, he is fantastic going forward. And I think that they would struggle to deal with the fact that he's so difficult to defend. But you run at him, it, he, won't, he won't stop you. Like, and I don't mean that. It, he's not reliable enough with when, when in defence. If, if they make a line break and he's one-on-one, -on -one, he can't make a one-on-one -on -one tackle. 
We know Wellesby can. We know Hardacre can. We know Tompkins can. We know we probably know that Makinson could track back and do it. We know that we've got props that I'm talking going to talk about later on that could probably get, track back and do it. We've seen it this season from definitely one of them. Um, so, and I think that's a I think that's a straight up no. I don't think Connor's anywhere near the um, the English side. I think, well, yeah, we'll see because uh, <laughs> oh. Connor in the England side. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not a centre for me, not a centre. I think that Hardacre is a far better centre than Connor. And and the combination of, like, imagine Hardacre with, like, a, a, an on-form Dom Young outside him. Like, that's a, that's a real threat. That's difficult to handle. Um, the first yeah. is another thing, but, but not Connor. I yeah. can't put Connor in centre. No, no, no. I need to take a risk, but but you can't yeah. risk too much in centre. No, you you're talking about risks and and sort of having a bit of a maverick and and sort of a player that maybe they wouldn't really know how to handle in 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 the squad. And for that reason, for my standoff, my in my seven shirt, sorry, no, in my six shirt, um, I've gone with Jack Wellsby. Um, yeah, is he in your six shirt as well, Robin? No, so. Wellsby's obviously is an option, you know, he's played at six and we've seen him play well at six as well. But on the international stage, that that the six is really, really important and it's a lot of pressure. And we've seen him win grand finals, but I think this is something else, you know, we've not seen him tested on this stage. To put him in at six, I think is uh, not our best option. Maybe one day in the future it will be and Maybe um, if we've got injuries and we're struggling and we've got to put him somewhere, we'll put him there. But um, I've actually picked Jake Connor at six. That was my six option. So I know the is that so is that options. that's your wild card, isn't it? Uh, that is my wild card. Yeah, and 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 the reason I picked him is exactly the same as why I've picked Hardacre. I know that he's got penalties in him. I know he can lose us a game, but. I'm willing to take the risk because we've got to play differently for the Aussies. He's good at getting under team skin. And I don't think that the Aussies, you know, the Aussies oh, deserve respect. Oh, there we go. They, keep... they think they deserve respect. They know how the game should be played. And we've seen them before get frustrated with teams that don't play how they want, that, how Australia wants them to play. And, and I think, I think at, at six, you can get away with a maverick, and the seven I've picked, I think, is a a great level-headed leader with NRL experience, and therefore we can we can afford to have a, a six that's a little bit more off the cuff, ad hoc. You know, is he going to chip it over the top? They just yeah, I know. I get yeah, I see the oh, yeah, yeah, I see that. Um... I think I, I think I know who your seven's going to be, and we'll get onto that later. And I'm really happy that you've I think you've picked him, and you've picked him in the right position this time. Um, Toby, Toby, who's your six? So you've already picked Jack Roseby at one. You were arguing with Jake Connor for the centre. Have you picked Jake Connor at six, or have you gone with a? You can't have gone with Jake Connor at six because you've already picked your wild card. So you must you've gone with someone totally different here. Uh, with me already picking my wild card, um, I went I went for a player who is at the top of Super League and I don't think can do it for England. But I genuinely saw him as perhaps my best option. Um, there's a, We'll get into the, we'll get to the seven talk, but there's one player who's missed out on my team um, because I want him to hit his best form again and he's not at that yet. Okay. So I, he's out of my team purely because I want to see him better before he gets into the England team, but I genuinely think he's Ooh. the best halfback he could have. Um, but he's not in my team. And this guy could potentially play at six with my seven option, but I, I'm trying to keep it mysterious. But I've gone for Johnny Lomax. Yeah, that's that's a big call, and I would have I would have gone for Johnny Lomax had he not been quite seriously injured. And I don't know if Sean Wayne will want to risk an injury like that for for such a big player. It's the, it's the one of the reasons I haven't gone with Lewis Dodd as well. Like it, it's so it's so scary. Like Lomax is playing injured in the Saints side, and yes, he's playing well. But to play injured in a World Cup is so risky. I'll, I'll let you carry on, but I think that that's that's the reason I haven't picked him. Yeah, as I say, so when you look at Johnny Lomax, just in terms of what he's able, what he does in Super League, he's the fifth most assist, try assisting halfback. You know, people ahead of him: Josh Drinkwater, Cade Cust, Tony Gijo, and Jake Truman. 
So only Jake Truman would be eligible for that six year out, you know, for England anyway. He's then got a. Um, he, oh, he's the joint. He's the joint first try scorer with Truman when amongst those five. So out of the people who assist yeah. the tries, he scores. He scores the most as well. And then on top of that, he he's got that sort of winning pedigree at Saints. And yeah. I think that's something where Jake Truman actually is really impressive statistically, considering how bad he was when he was playing on back injections last yeah. season. Yeah, he's really impressed this season. Um, and he's someone who could be sniffing around the squad again. But I think that. Just for that sort of, he's what he's been the best in Super League for a while. He's been at the, in the top level of halfbacks in Super League for a while, and I think it's just have to sort of let him. I, I just have to sort of put him in there because I got sort of bound by our restrictions and things. But I mean, I do think that Jake Connor is m- quite magical with the ball in his hand, and it is just a shame about his defense. Like that is my genuine opinion, of Jake Connor, at this point in time. Um, which is why I quite like the fact that Robin's put him in there. Yeah, I mean, and I'd love to see Jake Connor be be reliable enough in defence for me to want to pick him. Um, the only reason I haven't picked Johnny Lomax is because of his injury. We weren't sure sort of how long he'd want to play. It looked like he might be out for the year. Like a ruptured bicep is such a huge injury. I don't think he's going to make the re- the end of the Super League season. Let and if he, and if he does get if it and he's going to agitate it and he's going to require potential surgery and if he does get surgery he's going to miss the World Cup so in my head I'm thinking well, he's not going to be available, uh, which is why I've gone for his sort of protege his sort of backup in Jack Wellsby I don't know, Robin Robin you've gone with Jake Connor Toby you've gone with Johnny Lomax I mean I'm happy to not have Jack Wellsby in the starting team as long as he makes the squad and I'm happy for him to be in the squad as like a backup fullback or even like a backup half because like we said he can play anywhere from one to seven and we know he can he can probably play loose third loose forward if we if we really need him to and, and for that I'm, I'm happy to accept that Wellsby is not going to start the, the question is now is, is it Jake Connor or Johnny Lomax in in, in that six shirt I think the argument Robin makes in terms of needing to be different I don't think Lomax in the England shirt is different at all. In fact, I think that he, he is that player who is just at the top of Super League, but not in an international level. Jake Connor, we think of that 2018 series with New Zealand. Like, he was a huge player in that series. Yeah. Um, playing at centre there. And now he's used to having the ball in his hand constantly. He's used to setting up tries. Um, so I, I think that we, we, we should probably use that wild card and we should put Jake Connor in at six, to be honest. I'm happy, uh, Robin. As long as you agree with with that, I'm sure you will. Of course, I do. Yeah, That's, I mean, uh, you make great points with like Lomax and Wellsby, but like you say, I think the Aussies have got them covered. I think they can they can predict them and manage them, and we're not gonna we're not gonna win. But with Connor, it just gives that element of unpredictability, that, and it gives us an edge. Yeah, um, I, I agree. I mean, so at the minute, one, one to seven, oh, one to six, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself at seven. Uh, Tompkins at fullback, McGilvray and Makinson on each wing, Gildart and Farnworth in the centre with Connor at six. The replacements we've kind of got is our replacement fullback slash replacement half. You Versatility, you've got Wellsby. Another re- versatility or utility player in Zach Hardacre and in a winger, you've got Ash Hanley. I mean, with, between Hardacre and Wellsby and Hanley, you're probably not going to need to select many more backs. Obviously, you're going to have one more halfback. You might maybe need another out-and-out halfback just to cover. But you're not, you're not going to need to have loads. You're not going to have to have, I don't yeah, think, I four think. halfbacks in that team because you've got Tompkins who can shift into the halves as well. Like I think that's something I that the bonus I, we have. Hanley's um, he's not in Sean Wayne's training squad, is he? I don't think. No, he's not. Yes, but uh, I know. I mean, so our, our our one to thirteen is allowed one. Is only one wild card. Anyone else? The 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 squad the squad can be anyone. So so like if we wanted to, we could still put my wild card in there later on. If if we all agree that 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 player needs to be in the squad. I think this player does need to be in the squad, but you know, easy. Ash Hanley's been sort of going to the squad, but I think. I, th- I think. I mean, yeah. I mean, we you said the mix between Dom Young and, and Josh Charnley is Ash Hanley, isn't it? And I think providing he stays injury free, that's one something really unlucky for him. I think I'd also just like to say, like, it's really sad about Harry Newman's injury. He's played one game this season, and yeah. in that game, he's literally the best centre in the competition. Yeah, and I think I think if Newman's available, we don't have 
Guild are, are hard go potentially in that in that squad. One of them drops out, and you and you have Newman he needs in there. To get at least ten, fifteen games in him before that World Cup comes. Yeah, around. yeah, it, it is sad. Um, probably the most important shirt of of the the the, top of the, the team is the number seven shirt in in any team. It's your front man. It's your leading man. It's your it's your organizer. Your general. Um, I think Robin's picked the same man as well, and and I think it's Jackson Hastings for us, isn't it, Robin? That's right. That's who I've gone for. I'm as well. I'm shocked he's not playing thirteen. <laughs> yeah, I have to submit on that. Although I, I feel like we can all forget about that when now Toby picked uh, Chandler. As, as well. I feel like we can move on. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, um, explain to me. I, I won't explain because it, it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, he ripped up in Super League and then he signed for my club in the NRL, and he's, he's phenomenal. Um, and like Toby said, I don't think he has hit his best form, but he has hit some serious form, and, and I'm looking forward to him potentially being in that England squad. Tell me why you've picked him. Well, like you say, what he did over here in the Super League was was mint. You know, like was it was it three years? Yeah. Every single year, he was like the best player in the competition. He, he led that Salford side to a grand final, and I think that you can see the leadership in him now. When you watch West play, he, he's like really commanding that team, and I think West actually, I think he squeezes the best out of all the players around him. Um, I think he's a great leader, and I think England really, really need that. I think that's that's going to be really, really key that we have a, an on-form Hastings if we've got any chance in this World Cup. Yeah. Um, but yeah, his le- his leadership's fantastic. He's skillful. He's got a good kicking game. He's got a good running game. He makes the right decisions. He's a hard worker. Every single time there's a break, he's always the first man back. He's always chasing things up in the middle. I, yeah, I love his attitude. I think around uh, on farm Hastings, mm. you can build a really, really strong team that wants to work for each other and wants to win. Everything about I love everything about Jackson Hastings. Yeah. For me, I would even give him the captain. I, I just Ooh. think he's the he's the man that can lead a team and and a bit like we spoke about Jason Tamalola, like inspiring this nation. To, to just elevate themselves to the top of the international game, like he's he's got that about him. He can just get people to work hard, and as a team. And so, absolutely, that was the that was the first name I wrote down this paper. The easiest pick for me was Jackson Hayes. Yeah. Whatever Sean Wayne says about him not being a, English, <laughs> he, can, he can do one. If you don't pick Hastings. You're an idiot. Yeah, I, I think if he doesn't pick Hastings, England don't win the World Cup. I'm not saying Hastings is the World Cup winner for England, but he's certainly a key, a key part of that. Um, to the fact that Michael Maguire, as much as I don't really like him, decided to shift Luke Brooks out of the seven into the six, even though he's on a million pound year, to put Hastings into the seven shirt, goes to show how much trust a coach like Michael Maguire has in him. A man like Sean Wayne respects Michael Maguire with their Wigan connections and and how they know each other and how how they play the game of rugby league and I think it kind of self explanatory a little bit. Toby's going to disappoint both of us now and he's going to pick. I reckon he's got Gareth Widdop written down or something. Um, <laughs> but and if I'm right, I'll 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 love it. Um, but yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. So Jordy Gibson's had a fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. So, if, you've listened, if anyone who's listened to this podcast knows that I have an undying love for George Williams and when I started to make the squad I put him in at seven and then I started doing research. In the NRL, Jackson Hastings has has called at 0.7% higher efficiency than George Williams. He makes more of his tackles than George Williams makes, you know. <laughs> Jackson Hastings has run for 200 more metres in two less games than George Williams in the NRL. <laughs> Jackson Hastings plays in the NRL like, <laughs> and I think everything Robin said is true George Williams he's fifth for attacking kicks this year the, 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 it, for my money a, a peak four of George Williams is in this team yeah 100% and Abdul, Jordan Abdul's a better kicker than him at the moment um, and things like that is you know Mitch Pearce is a better try scorer and Mitch Pearce would never get near the Australian squad you know I know it's been a bit yeah, no, I agree. And the fact that you've written him, you've written him down, and then you've looked at some of the stats and gone, actually, I'm probably wrong here. And so, for these sort of reasons, I think I still believe that George Williams could reach a peak form better than Jackson and be better than Jackson, and is better than Jackson Hastings ever could when he was in his prime at Canberra. Yeah. But as it stands right now, this season, 
Jackson Hastings is the form English halfback. And for that, and for that reason, we are all going for Jackson Hastings in that seven shirt. <laughs> I thought that was going to be left field. I thought it was going to be like, oh. No, no. no. I mean, the George Williams before he went to Canberra, we were licking our lips with and we were going, imagine what he's going to be like at the next World Cup. Like, a year ago, we probably wouldn't be having the conversation. Like, he'd probably still be on on topic. He'd probably be like, wow, he can still do it. He He came in and he did such a phenomenal job. He's been so quiet. He... He's not. I don't even think he's the on form. I don't even. I don't know where he sits in terms of alongside Widdup in that squad or even Ratchford in that squad. But he doesn't seem to be. When you watch them, he doesn't seem to be the standout player, and that's what you'd want from your seven. He needs to be the man in charge, and I don't think he is. I think Widdup and Ratchford are more like sevens in that Wigan team, and he's more of a six. Um, and I think he'll always will be more of a six, just for the type of type of rugby he plays, and to have. Williams alongside maybe Connor or even Lomax or even Wellesby, whoever we, whoever Wayne decides to sort of put in that six shirt, I don't think you can have two sixes playing the halves. Like George Williams is a six, not a seven. And then I can make the argument, and I think this is the argument I was going to come back to, that maybe you could say Williams and Hastings is your partnership. But then I think that yeah, you know, it's kind of I don't think I'm not quite sure. Well, you want the running game out of your six, which I don't think Williams has given us at the moment. No, um, no, not at all. So Jack Hastings has given us a better running game, and he's definitely a seven. So, yeah, I think it's just, and it hurts me because I genuinely, like him at Canberra, he was like the <laughs> player to take this England team forward. And now it's just, it just makes me sad. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah, no, so I totally agree. Um, I, I agree. I mean, and George Williams, phenomenal player, one of the best players that England have produced in, in a long time, but he just hasn't been able to be the George Williams he was before he went to, over to the NRL or even at the NR, in the NRL when he was there. Um, we'll move into the forwards now. We've done one to seven. We'll start with our props before we go on to Hooker because I think that's Hooker's going to be a bit of a conversation. My two starting props, are, I, I think, are quite self-explanatory here. If you, I've got Luke Thompson and Alex Wormsley. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the easiest. I think that was the easiest decision. I, I know you said that you'd written. I know you said you were like, "Ah, oh, Hastings was the first name on my on my list." But for me, it was Luke Thompson. I mean, he is. I know he hadn't. He didn't have the best of seasons when he sort of when he went over there. He was very quiet. But he is still probably one of the best prop forwards in the game. Um, I, I, yeah. I mean, like you said, we both we all sort of just went. Yep, yeah, fair enough. Is there much of a conversation to have for your starting props, or is could you argue that one of them could be on the bench with one another one starting later on? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, between Alec Wormsley and Thompson, Wormsley's ninety five percent of his tackles, Thompson's ninety four percent. Where Thompson runs for hundred meters per game in the NRL, Wormsley busts through three point three point two tackles per game. Mm. Um, and like, there's certain things that stats can't tell, and we know that Wormsley is just an international standard prop. And I think, yeah, every, I think everyone in the NRL media says that Luke Thompson's the best forward at the Bulldogs, um, and like, it's actually becoming one of the better forwards in the NRL. I think a player who surprised me when I was sort of doing my research was Mikkel Edsky, who this season in Super Leagues in a crap Leeds team is tackling at 93.5% and running for over 100 metres a game, um, which is sort of very good. And also with Mikkel Edsky, he's only made one error this season. Again, wow. Bad, in a bad Leeds side. And that's why, for me, he was on the interchange bench. Um, but he's not, he's not at the level of Thompson and Walmsley. He's not no. the size of Thompson and Walmsley either. But yeah. No, that that's definitely true. I mean, I, I know we said we'd pick a 17 and I kind of got two reserves here because I couldn't really think about who I wanted to put on my interchange bench and my, my two reserves were Mikel Aletsi and Elliot Whitehead and I don't, I don't know if you guys have started Elliot Whitehead and that, that was a conversation that I was having with myself and it, it was quite a difficult one and we'll move into second rows after we spoke about Hooker so I won't get into that too much but props Luke Thompson, Alex Wormsley I mean Wormsley could easily go and do it over in the NRL if he wanted to, but he doesn't want to. It was the same sort of conversation we had about James Roby when we spoke about him a few weeks ago and Kieran Cunningham. These guys could go and do it in the NRL and they were given the opportunity. They didn't want to. They don't want to. They'll happily play here and be the best they can be in, in this country. And I think I'm happy. I'm happy with that. If we're happy with our starting props, we'll, we'll move straight on. Um, number nine, I've gone with a wild card, so I'll wait until the end. Uh, you, you two both know who it is here. Um, where are we going with, with Hooker for you two? Yeah, I think in terms of international quality, we're actually a little bit low on hookers. I think there's one player who's actually available um, <laughs> in Sean Wayne's squad who we've seen play well for England, and that's Daryl Clark. 
um, 96.8% on the tackling efficiency. With hookers who have run from dummy half more than 20 times, he's fourth for the amount of metres per carry um, that he makes. Um, and he's just, as I say, he's just got that experience in England shirt. Um, the one thing I will say here is um, I hope Cruz Leeming is nowhere near the squad. <laughs> He's tackling at 86.7% this year. And the moment I saw that at a hooker, when you've got like Danny Outen, who's yeah. like not, never been near an England squad. It's he's, bad, isn't it? So he, He's so much above sort of cruising. And, 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 also, and also, Danny Houghton can play 80 minutes. I've never known, like... Cruz Leeming at hooker doesn't necessarily play 80 minutes. He's rotated in and out. Long, nobody suggest, is going to suggest Cruz Leeming, then I'm happy. Um, my backup hooker was then Paul McShane, because statistically he's been fantastic, but... I think the only player who's proven England international quality that I had available was Daryl Clark, and I had to go with him. Uh, Robin, have you gone with Daryl Clark as well? Yeah, I, well, no, I haven't. I've actually I've gone with Paul McShane, but only because I didn't know what else to do. I like I, I like Daryl Clark, but there's something Paul, Paul McShane is. Um, I don't know. He's a bit. He's a bit of an opportunist. You know what I mean? Like he's, you, you can back that. If there's a half a gap, he's already in it. Do you know what I mean? He's that kind of a player, and I like what he does around the rook. And I feel like, uh, uh, with with such strong props beside him, I actually think he can do a, a really really good job. And I think he can provide um, Hastings. So my my partnership of Hastings and Connor, I think he can provide them with ball at the right time, quick enough that it gives it puts us on the front foot. Clark, I'm not sure. I, I don't think he's going to win us a game. I think he's a he's a great player. He's a fit player. He's got he's you know he's a good good side. Yeah. He's a hard work and everything. But I just think that Paul McShane's a, a little bit more intelligent than than Clark. And yeah. no no disrespect, but I, in terms of spotting those opportunities before they happen, I think Paul McShane is the best option for that. So that's why I picked him. But I can easily make an argument for Clark and <laughs> easily make a, an argument for your. Um, Wild card choice. Um, yeah, I mean, sort of, go on. Oh, sorry, the nod I give to Paul McShane is that he gets the most try assists from Hooker um, in the league. As yeah. Well. So that, that sort of adds to what Robin was saying about he probably is actually a better playmaker, and he's a third playmaker within that within the well fourth playmaker. I guess if you've got the full back as well, so he really, yeah. Yeah, and and this is where my my sort of decision is my, my choice at Hooker now is is. Invalid because we've we've chosen Jake Connor as our as our wild card in our start in our in our seventeen and for that reason I've kind of already said I've, I'm going to ask but I kind of already have done it can I put my wild card as our backup hooker because I think if this man is not in the World Cup squad we're going to really struggle in the middle of the park we have to we have to convince James Roby to come out of retirement just for this World Cup like just in, just because we don't I don't think there's anyone better than him. And I, I don't know if you two can disagree. I know you both chose your wild cards earlier on, but if you hadn't, would he be in there? Would you try to convince him to come out of retirement to play in this World Cup? He's, I mean, he's a workhorse, isn't he? And his defence is fantastic. He's a full 80-minute player. Um, and, you know, he, he'll, he'll do a job for us. But, as I've said a few times, I'm picking slightly different options. I'm, I'm picking... Um, off the cuff style players and Ro where whereas I think Roby likes the structure, he likes to organise his forwards. Um I just I feel like with my team that Shane works better, but you like to say no to Roby would be stupid. Of course you've got to take him to the World Cup as a as at least as a backup because you know I could pick Paul McShane and he could just get absolutely dominated and yeah. be like, what are we going to do for the rest of the competition? So, Roby is um, a solid, solid choice. Yeah, in my when I made my own 24-man squad, I um, I picked th I, I picked three hookers, knowing that sort of that this was going to come as a wild card. And like there is, there is, there is no, you can argue McShane and Clark. I think you can argue that they're on a par with Roby in terms of their Super League performance this year. There's no one else you can argue is close to that apart from maybe Danny Houghton. Um, but yeah, I think Roby is, he's proven an England shirt and um, yeah. he yeah he, he, he belongs uh, in that England team. And I think it's just, you know, if the World Cup was when it was supposed to be, he would have been in that England team. Uh, yeah, and, and that that's my argument is if it was last year, he would have been in that England team. Because it's not last year, it's now this year, he's not in that World Cup team. A year for a player that is still 
in my opinion, the best hooker in Super League and the best English hooker. I don't think there's any English hookers. Yeah, there is actually. There's one in the NRL, but he's nowhere near the level of this squad. Like Josh Hodgson is not. Is no. He's not going anywhere near this England squad, and I'm and I'm glad of that. Um, I mean, I'd rather pick Cruz Leeming than pick Josh Hodgson, um, <laughs> and I think Toby would as well. Um, so for me, Roby has to go as as sort of a backup. I mean, for me, I don't. I'd pick two sort of two hookers. Um, I don't think you need to pick three. But if obviously you could pick three, and I think if you're going to pick three, McShane, Clark, and Roby would be your three. Um, tough choice for me. I think just because of the way I've seen them play this season so far, Paul McShane has plenty of time to change my mind, obviously. And it's, at the end of the day, it isn't our decision. It is Sean Wayne's. But for me, Daryl Clark just has that extra step for him. Um, and, I, and I think he just gives that a little bit something extra. But Daryl Clark also doesn't play 80 minutes. Neither of these hookers, Clark or McShane, often play 80 minutes for their club and they might have to for England I think we've got to go with um, Daryl Clark as well when we think when the games are going to get really tough I think he's going to dig his heels in and he's going to be more and he's not going to yeah. hands on the ball much when he's having to defend back to back to back sets he can and do that he's probably a bit more of a level head isn't he yeah, he'll yeah I agree yeah yeah and I think for the fact that he is more level headed and he's a bit more solid in the middle when he's defending and I think that that's the reason Clark does get that nine shirt, but I'm hoping Roby comes out of retirement. Um, second row, I'm going to go with one that I think we should all have gone for, sort of with our with our wingers here, which we kind of agreed on. Liam Farrell is in the form of his life, um, and he's in the England squad. Is is he in your England squad? Is yeah, he in? He's, is yeah. He's, he's in mine, yeah. but. I've picked like three and I've got one of them on the bench. That's, I kind yeah. of don't mind who goes on the bench because I know that they'll all probably get the same amount of game time. Yeah. So I did put him on the bench but just because I think him coming on to a slightly fatigued pitch, it actually suits his style a bit more because he, he loves to come back against the run of play and that and it's, it's easier to catch tired players in that. So I don't think he starts. That's purely a tactical decision of like, who I want to be engaged in that like initial energy battle versus yeah. who I want to come on the pitch against tired bodies. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Liam Farrell. He's the, he's the first amongst all forwards for making clean breaks. Um, he's the fourth amongst all forwards for tackle busts, and like the players who are above him in that is like David Fafita and Tabita <laughs> Setai. Um, yeah. You know, so he's up there with those sort of huge forwards, and then he's also tackling at night over ninety three percent efficiency. So. For me, like he's he's clearly been the best second row in Super League this yeah. Um, year. I like what Robin said in terms of maybe using him just for his ability to make breaks yeah. off the bank. That's quite a nice idea. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, he was starting. Yeah, I mean, like like you said, Robin, he's, it doesn't really matter that you've got three of them. They're all going to have around the same amount of game time in an, in a, in a game. So even if he does start. You could let him have a forty-minute break or a twenty-minute break. Come on again at the second half or or whatever. You could you could sort of give him half an hour, let him have half an hour break, and then bring him on for the last twenty minutes against those tired legs, depending on what you've got for your, your other second rower. For me, I, this is a bit of this isn't. It's an NRL pick, but it's probably not the NRL pick you're expecting. I've already mentioned Elliot Whitehead, and he's not in my starting. I've gone with Ryan Sutton. Um, he just seems. I've seen him play on much watch NRL this year. He started off the season. I don't think he started the season in the Canberra team. I think he started playing in in the in the league in the sort of the cut below. He's come into the squad. He's impressed. He's getting on the score sheet. He's being so, he's solid defensively. He's a massive unit for a second rower. I think for me, he has to be in the. I don't know if he'll be he'll be start with Sean Wayne, but for me, he is very very impressive and. I think we need to give someone like that, someone that knows the NRL and knows a lot of the opposition he's going to come up against. I think he needs to be in and around that that's tip that team. Yeah, Sutton yeah. was on was on the bench for me as um, as the sort of backup prop. I mean, he tackles at ninety three point three percent, which is very similar to that Mikolai Ledsky number that I sort of was such a big fan of. Um, he's this year he's been making ninety two meters per game, but last year that was one hundred and fifteen. So he's got meters in him, um, and I just think that. I think that his relationship with Sean Wayne from Wigan, yeah. on top of that, you know, his NRL, the NRL experience he's got, and I think he's actually underappreciated in the NRL by by Ricky Stewart, and the fact he wasn't even starting at the start of this year was actually a bit of a joke. Um, and now, yeah, he's absolutely he's in the 17 for me. 
Um, at second row, I'm not sure. I think he's more of a prop. I think I want a bit of ball handling. I mean, I went for John Bateman in, as my second second rower. Um, second for offloading behind Peter Matautia, and he's only made three errors this year. So he, did, you know, it's not like he's throwing stupid offloads either. He's really picking his moments to sort of help the attack with his offloading ability. Yeah. Um, it's t- again, his tackle efficiency is fantastic, and he's proven in the NRL. Yeah, I, I, I do think Bateman's a good shout. Um, Robin, have you gone for Bateman here as well, or have you gone for someone yeah. else? Bateman's in there at second row. He's not as good as he was, sort of in that Canberra team. But he's, you know, he's got that NRL experience. He's a solid choice for us. Uh, but my other, my other second row, I, I went for Whitehead. I know that his form's dipped a little bit recently, but he's, he's a very experienced NRL player. Uh, similar sort of style to Bateman, but he carries a little bit more weight. Yet he's also got sort of nicer, uh, you know, crisper passes, and he's got a, like a nice offload and a flip pass in him. So he's a, he is a, a threat. Um, so I went for for Whitehead and Bateman as my starting second row. Well, like I said, I'm using the bench a lot here, so they're not, it's not set in stone that they start. But that's how I would play it. Yeah, that that makes sense. Um, so so the three the three sort of I've gone with Ryan Sutton, and like you said, he's sort of a, he sort of is a backup prop, but he kind of can play anywhere in the in the forwards, and I like the fact he can play. Sec, second row, um, but I'm happy to go with Bateman and Farrell. Whitehead was one of my reserves. Um, we're sort of getting into that sort of who's going to start, who's not for these second rows. And I think, like you said, with forwards, it's a bit more easy because they're they're more interchangeable. In that one to seven doesn't often change in the game. It is your forwards that that changes. So it's who stars, who comes off the bench. And I think I think Whitehead and Sutton, two as off the bench options, are not are not bad off the bench options. And I'm happy to leave them on the bench. For that, for that reason, um, I don't know if you two are happy with that. So we go Bateman, Farrell, and then on the bench you've got Whitehead, Sutton, and then you'll probably have another prop on the bench. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, I kind of want to know what we're doing about Luth as well because that might also influence. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. We'll get to that. Um, I'm going to go last on that one because I think um, Sutton's definitely on the bench, and I think I, I don't know. I think in terms of you're going to need two props on the bench. I think Sutton and Ledsky, I think, are, are the clear options. Um, okay. so, oh, there is there is a wild card which I'll throw into the loose forward discussion in a minute, um, but yeah, that's for me. Uh, for me, yeah, you're absolutely right in terms of that. Um, Whitehead is again someone I'll talk about in the loose forward discussion in a minute. But <laughs> it's um, he's had an interesting season when he started at loose forward and then moved back into second row. Yeah, um, Canberra and his I think it's messed with his stats a little bit. Um, which has made me a bit more cautious of him than I think I was. Sort of, yeah. You know, he was one of the first names on the team sheet going into this season. That's yeah, changed like yeah, definitely. Um, it, it's it's a tough conversation. Who who does want to go first with loose forward? It's not going to be me, so it can be one of you two. Well, so loose forward is. I've got lots of names here, and it all oh, and when when you're picking a seventeen, you've got to think about who they're playing with, what sort of style you want. So. They're all they've all got the pros and cons. I've, I've listed I've listed Sutton, and that's why I didn't have him in the second row. Uh, I've listed Knowles, I've listed Lees, and I've also put Bateman, even though I actually ended up picking him at second row. Mm-hmm. So all these all these options uh, are doable, usable. Someone like Sutton would be a good pick. You know, I, I like I, in the team that I've picked uh, using the loose as sort of another prop. Definitely made sense to me. Uh, I haven't gone with Jackson Hastings this year, <laughs> <laughs> so. But yeah, I, I kind of want to. I want to hear. I want to. I feel like I will be able to make a decision once I've heard all the I evidence. Don't, I don't. I don't. I don't, piece in my I don't think you will. <laughs> I'm right, I'll look. I'll go. Okay. So I because I didn't have a wild card. Um, my choice for me came down to Elliot Whitehead or Morgan Knowles. Comparing those two, considering Morgan Knowles, how detrimental he was to that Saints team the first three, four weeks of the season, um, Elliot Whitehead tackles at a higher efficiency than him when he plays in the NRL. Uh, Morgan Knowles hasn't made a single offload this season, which just gives me a little bit of worry in terms of in my back row. I need a bit of creativity. You look at what Jake, Jake Trevojevic does. Um, you look at what Victor Radley does, and I don't think Morgan Knowles is being that ball handling 13 that sort of what you know I'd want in my England team. Um, he's also Elliot Whitehead running for 20 more meters um, per game than um, Knowles in the NRL, and it was that sort of 
I just I, I just don't know. He's statistically, he doesn't perhaps match what we see on the pitch, and I was yeah. a little bit, I was a little bit, you know, I want to make sure that I've got a bit a unit of thirteen who's really going to help put the team on the front foot. You know, he has he hasn't got an insane when you haven't got a whole Saints team around you against Wakefield. It, it, would Noll's performance dip perhaps? Mm. Um, the player I'd throw in there in terms of the best loose forward in Super League this year is Joe Westerman. Um, he's tackling at 96.6%. He's run for 40 more metres than Whitehead, so 60 more metres per game, this is, than Knowles. Um, obviously, it's a mediocre cast team, but he's also making 15 off. He's made 15 offloads this season. Like Joe Westerman's been fantastic for Cass. Um, but again, I hope. And a lot of players can be fantastic for Cass, I guess, in this season. Um, yeah, so that's sort of my thoughts. Was I got forced into me taking Whitehead, but I really liked sort of Westerman. And again, Sutton for me was a backup prop, but he could quite easily just be the, that big unit at 13 and effectively playing with three props. So I'm happy sort of to go with either of the Canberra boys because we can't pick Westerman. Um, no, we can't pick Westerman, but you mentioned a player that, in my eyes, could could play for Australia, like 100% could definitely play for Australia depending on sort of what route they want to go down and how many loose forwards they want to pick. I'm going to run you down a list of the New South Wales locks and loose forwards this season, okay? Jake Trevojevic, Isa Yeo, Cameron Murray, Dale Finucane. There's a name or not on that list that should be on that list. We all know who it is. They've never played Origin before. Who? The Inflict. Yeah, Victor the Inflictor has never played Origin. I know he's been injured and he's been suspended and it hasn't, that means he hasn't been able to be selected and he's missed games, right? But the fact that these games are played not necessarily week after week, but he hasn't made a, de- a State of Origin debut in in three years, over nine games, where these games are not played week in, week out. Like, then he's doing... And I'm not even going to... Like, look at the Queensland locks because... There's so much depth that Australia have in that position. It's sad to say, but will Victor, the inflictor, play for Australia before, the, like at the next World Cup? If you look at Travojevic is young, Murray's young. Like Matt, think about who's going to come in in the next four years. I think I think we need to do our best. And it's he's technically not a wild card because of because he's eligible for England. I mean, you've got Jai Arrow. Playing for Queensland, you got Fasua Malawi. There's so many locks that I think would play for Australia ahead of Victor Radley. And if I'm Victor Radley, I'm I'm tr- doing my best to play at top level. And if he can be England's next big loose forward and sort of solve that issue that we have since sort of Sam Burgess and Sean O'Loughlin have left, I would I would love to see Victor Radley have, play for England. And I, it's a big argument, but he's the best loose forward on any list. For yeah. That, Absolutely. If he turns around and says he wants to play for England, it, uh, like he can play for England. He is the best loose forward out of all those names that we've spoken about. But I don't believe that he will. <laughs> but as, I'd love to see it. I would actually love to see it. I, he, he's, he's such an impact player. And I mean, he's he's got discipline issues as well, you know. Yeah, so he does. He's a bit of a gamble. But, um, you love a gamble, though. Uh, exactly, he just ticks every box for me. Like the squad that I've named here, just full of these like, <laughs> like <laughs> risky, like players that are just a bit different. So he would totally fit for me. But I'm not going to get my hopes up and think that we've got him because, you know, he's he's an Australian, isn't he? he, he I don't think yeah, he'll he want to play for England. It's just such a. It's just not a good time to sort of bring him into an England setup either. No. You know, he doesn't. I think the only English player he'll actually know is Ryan Hall, and that's if Ryan <laughs> Hall makes the squad. Um, you know, he, he, there's going to be things like the English culture and stuff that's going to happen, and he might not, you know, get on with too well, um, or he might, you know, struggle to adapt to sort of being part of that that dressing room at the very start. Um, I, I just think that there's a lot of like. There's just a lot of unknowns with bringing him into that squad. Like, it, but then at the same time, you're absolutely right in terms of who can go toe to toe with an Australian, uh, and it is an Australian. So, it's, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I I appreciate that, and it's it's as I said, it's a position I've really struggled to pick with because it's kind of like I want I want a player who's gonna like be part of the spine, not just a, a, a tw- like a you know a prop, not a third prop. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's what what's made this sort of really difficult. 
um, to sort of pick. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'd have my like concerns about Radley, but I really do appreciate why he is the best option in terms of you know if we could have got him in the squad two years ago and yeah put him into a new jersey, then it's a different conversation. Yeah, I mean, I can't, we can kind of have the same conversation with Sam we're about Sam Walker. Um, like born in Leeds, so he is English. Like you can't you can't argue the fact he's he's an Australian with heritage. Born in England, um, that's just, I know his parents are Australian and, and whatever, but that's a reason we we could have easily gone. Oh look, throw Sam Walker in at six. He's eligible for England, but he we know he's going to be playing for Australia. We know that he's going to commit to Australia. That's quite weak as well. Like considering. yeah, like he is seen as he's seen as one of the best sixes in the game in the NRL for one of the best teams in the league. But I still wouldn't necessarily pick him over Hastings. If it, it's it's really difficult, um, but we need to, Robin. You technically still haven't submitted on a loose forward yet, so we can't choose. Well, I mean, like obviously, I, if I, if Radley's available, I'll pick him. But if not, with the team that I've picked, I'm going to stick with Sutton. So Sutton or Radley? Yeah. <laughs> so I'll put Ryan Sutton in there. Sutton company made all of our squads, I think. So. Yeah, I think I think because I started Sutton at second row, you've started him at loose forward. He made your squad, um, Toby. I think we go Ryan Sutton at loose forward here. That leaves Whitehead and Knowles as two forwards on the bench. We go... My bench, I'm going to read out my bench, and it, it's probably going to shock you a little bit with sort of who I've gone for. I put Daryl Clark on there as a backup hooker, because, like you said, Roby's getting on a bit. He might not play, like, if Ruby doesn't play, Len Clark shoots straight into nine. You put someone else like Aledsky or Whitehead in there, wherever. Um, I've gone Tom Burgess, Callum Watkins, and Morgan Knowles. And the only reason I've gone with Callum Watkins is because he started playing some games in the second row. Yeah. He's one of the best centres we've got in the game. He's shifted into the second row. He's playing well. He's playing... Okay, in a in a not very good Salford side recently, he's he hasn't he didn't play for ten months, um, and I think if he can build his momentum, he can build the way he plays, he can improve as the season goes on. You have to pick him in your twenty four man squad as your sort of backup centre, which sort of means Hardacre is your backup fullback in a way. But because he can play a little bit in the second row, that's the only reason I put him in there. So I mean, Knowles was also on there. So for me, it's between my last two spots. I've got to go between. Well, I've got two spots. I've got Burgess and Watkins to fill the bench with Whitehead, with Whitehead and Knowles. I am an absolute idiot. I forgot Tom Burgess exists <laughs> when I was going through this. So yeah, I get something at thirteen. Give me Burgess and Oledsky on the bench um, as my two forwards. I went a bit weird with the bench because I was there's one guy in my team that I had to get in there um, and I couldn't. I, he wasn't in my. He wasn't at full back for me, so I put Sam, Sam Tompkins on my bench. But it's unrealistic to have a hooker Ooh. and a back on the bench. So like, it, it wasn't really a realistic thing. It was like a, these are the seventeen players I think must go to the World Cup. Okay. Um, and as part of that, so I, I mean, with Sam Tompkins, obviously, you could put him at full back and move Wellsby uh, into basically whatever position's injured. Uh, yeah. My sort of thinking, but you can also you can play him in the half. You can get away with him in the centres. Let's be honest. Like you could, you could use him between him and Wells, but you've got complete versatility. Yeah. Um, and that was sort of why I like Tomkins. Is also he's the leader. He's the captain. You know, he's sort of all the. Yeah. He's just. He's just. Yeah. He's the experienced head. He's a man of steel. Like it. It made sense for Tomkins to have to be in the squad. I just didn't. He didn't fit the place I was particularly going for. Um, but I don't think that he's somebody who would. You know, if he well. I mean, he's going to start anyway, but also I don't think that it's realistic to say you have a backup hooker and a backup back on the bench. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, for me, if Sutton was playing at that loose forward, then it'd be Whitehead, Oledsky, Burgess, and whoever the backup hooker uh, is, Shane Clark. Yeah, I mean, on, on, the, on the squad that we've picked cool. here, it would be Clark and potentially Roby or even McShane, and, or Roby or McShane. Like if we're going with three hookers, it would depend on, on how we're going from there. Um, Robin, how, are you agreeing with sort of Whitehead, Burgess, Oledsky, and then a hooker? Or are you going to go yeah. with sort of four uh, forwards? Actually, so, obviously, I put Farrell on the bench, but imagine it's Whitehead. Yeah. I, I have also picked Burgess, and I also picked Oledsky, but I'm asking a lot here, and I was going to pick Wellsby as my other... Uh, sub. Yeah. So I'm asking a lot of, of uh, well, we picked Clark in the end, so I'm asking a, an 80 minute performance from him. Yeah. But if we can well, pull it off, 
Yeah, exactly. Wellsby could come on and, and yeah, he and could play hooker. So um, yeah, you probably just have to shift around your defensive structure a little bit. Asking yeah. Wellsby to, to defend in the middle of the park is probably a massive ask if Clark has to come off. Um, it, it's difficult. I mean, we don't have to pick a, 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 a 17 in terms of realistically what we'd have. I mean, we know Whitehead, Burgess and Olenski are our three forwards. It's just then we go Wellsby or McShane, I guess. Okay. I, well, Wellsby, it's Wellsby, McShane and Roby are our three sort of options in there. Where, like We said Roby would have to be convinced out of retirement, so he sort of goes third place. So it's it's Wellsby or McShane, I think. I think Waterco comes down to like with Wellsby. I think Clark was a eight, well Clark was an eighty minute hooker. And it was. Danny Walker came into the team and Danny yeah. was to provide twenty minutes of relief. Yeah. I think that necessarily means Clark isn't an eighty minute hooker. Yeah. Although with the again rule and you know things, it sort of changes that. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. Uh, like obviously, I think we all love Jack Wellsby, but it's almost as if, but as I said, he sort of. He is error prone um, at the moment as well, so it almost kind of makes sense to perhaps pick McShane here. But yeah, yeah, I'm happy. To, I'm happy to go there. I'm happy to be in that like position. We, I feel like we we're making that decision based on the fact that we're sort of covering a hooker. We in an ideal world, we could have an eight minute hooker. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So I feel like we're almost submitting on that last bench spot and that's why I picked Wellsby because I feel like it's more of a yeah. positive selection it's a positive it's like, selection it's like we like know you are playing 80 minutes you can you physically cannot and, and then Wellsby no, no player when when an England manager says you're playing 80 minutes until you physically can't they're not gonna you know what I mean it's, it's a different mindset for Darryl Clark to go into that game with yeah. whereas I think Wellsby he does fill in literally everywhere and and as well with my whole idea of why I wanted to pick big wingers is because I want them to be on those first carries and give the hooker that sort of first second tackle off and give him that breathing space to allow him to last eighty minutes as well. So that's yeah. why it all ties in for me to give me that Wellsby on the bench. Yeah, I I totally agree. I think I think we put Wellsby on their bench then. Um, so we're going Whitehead, Burgess, Oledsky, Wellsby on the bench. Um, that leaves players like Morgan Knowles, Paul McShane, Hardacre and Hanley. Um, that's 21 men. We still have a, an out-and-out out half to select, potentially another second row or another hooker, depending on how we want to do this. Do we want to have five back row or six and just two hookers? If you're playing 80-minute hookers, you probably only need two. You just rotate them every time. And then, and then yeah, that's, that's how I'm going two half back, two standoff sort of section here. So you're kind of looking at two more half backs. I think Lomax has got to be one. Yeah. Um. So in, basically, one out and out half, and then one more player. Oh uh, yeah, I'd argue George Williams probably has to be the half over Lomax. Um, I mean no, I mean we're getting. I I I go two halves in that squad. So you're going Connor. Oh, so you've got you've got so you've got Connor Hastings, Lomax, Williams. There's your four out and out halfbacks, and then on top of that, you're going to have Tompkins. You're going to have Wellsby, Hardacre. So I mean you've got seven potential halfbacks in there in case you get a stupid injury crisis. You've got three fullbacks in that option. We've technically got four fullbacks in that option with Connor in there as well. Lomax can play. So five foot five fullbacks in there, like three wingers, three centers. In terms of that position, I think that's I think that's a, as good as we're going to get in terms of our one to seven and extras. Yeah, we've got quite a lot of players that have like two or three uh, positions they can cover. So I think uh, we're quite well covered in the box. Like we, obviously, it's not ideal, but we can get get through an injury crisis by shifting these players around quite well. But I don't think we're that deep in the. Uh, Props. Yeah, that. I mean, we've got we've we've got Thompson, Thompson, Burgess, Wormsley, Oledsky, Um Plus, we've got R- Sutton, Sutton, Sutton and Knowles in there. I think Knowles well, that's only one that's not in the starting seventeen. So one injury and we're out of props. Yeah. Uh, nah, f- we've got. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, four. Yeah, five is four. Four props and them all to be in the seventeen. It is quite a big arse. You'd probably need. One more prop, and, well, you need your prop in a second row, really, don't you? In there, Knowles would come in as my sort of fifth, my fifth choice, but then obviously Westerman as well. Uh, I think between Knowles and Westerman, they're they're the, they're the best two ball carrying forwards that 
um, that we have outside of the starting props um, and loose forward. Uh, the other player that I throw in as my sort of backup second row would be Ben Curry, uh, who has actually had a very good year. Um, he has, yeah, he has. Ben Curry is the sort of backup second row, and then you just need to worry about backup middles, which I think you need what three of, well, an extra one of. Yeah, we we so we need we need an extra middle and a, an extra and then an extra second row or or centre or no second row or um, hooker really. I mean. The, the squad at the minute is Tompkins, McGilvray, Gildart, Farnworth, Makinson, Connor, Hastings, Thompson, Clark, Wormsley, Bateman, Farrell, Sutton. Then you've got Whitehead, Burgess, Oledsky, Wellsby, Knowles, McShane, Williams, Lomax, Hardacre, Handley, which leaves us two spots. Uh, no, two spots? Uh, no, hold on. One. One, just one. one spot. Yeah, one spot. So, so we've got... For me, let's get rid of Hanley, and then we've got two spots back, because... Okay. Need Hanley. Not if you've got Wellsby, Hardacre, Tompkins, yeah. etc. Yeah, that, I, I'm, 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 happy, I'm happy to do that if you are, uh, Toby. It would make you worry. Have one, one winger injury, and all of a sudden we're playing a centre out wide. Or Wellsby out wide, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I mean, fine. yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, I mean, that's what I mean. Wellsby's in that squad as that utility sort of... If Tompkins needs a rest, you can start him. But if he gets injured, then you, it doesn't really matter. I think I'm think I'm happy to be quite light on backs because we know that the backs we've got can play sort of anywhere, especially yeah. if we are taking Tompkins and Hardacre and Wellsby and Connor. So, um, so we've still got so we've got two spots left, which means we're going to go. We're going one more prop for guaranteed. And then we're going to go with either a second row or a hooker, I guess. Or ben Curry was in there, was he? Ben Curry, we can put Curry in there, yeah. And then so... Yeah, it's who's who's that prop? I mean, it was tough because you've got you've obviously got George Burgess there, but it's whether or not he could still do what he was able to do before he joined Wigan. Putting on all that like crazy weight. Um, that he did it's not done well for him I don't even know if he's obviously he's got his off field issues as well whether they'll be sorted in time for the World Cup um, I'm happy to take any any prop really now because yeah, they're not then they're, they're not going to get a lot of game time are they and you've got Sutton you've got Sutton and Knowles so I suppose Westerman could be like a loose forward heavy I guess isn't it but Sutton's technically a prop as well we're playing at 30 he is yeah so, but yeah Westerman I think West in terms of Forwards this year statistically, Westerman's the best option we have. Um, assuming he's actually English and he's not just one of these like forgotten Aussies. <laughs> um, I think it was Jordan ranking. Used to yeah, be Jordan. Yeah, it was ranking. Yeah, it was definitely uh, ranking that I thought was English and he never was. So it was it was a bit odd that one. Where so we've decided then. <laughs> Player, I'm completely. I, I'm personally against. He's had a weak season. He has. Yeah, he's not as good as the season he had. The last one, sort of, it's it's difficult. Is what about is, is Smithies is nowhere near your squads either, is he? Uh, you've got Dan Smith at Castleford, who's been all right. It, what about Mike, Mike Lee? Is he fit? We just said he's probably not. He's not been great this season. Um, that's all right. Um, it, it's tough. I mean, I, we could probably go any any prop. I mean, I'm happy to take Westerman. Like you said Sutton is a prop. Uh, yeah. Knowles can do a, a prop's job, and Westerman's probably deserved it, hasn't he? In terms of the way he's he's played since he's rejoined Cass, in terms of his Honestly, his ability, like Westman's a, a fine replacement. But the truth is, if if we get to a stage where we need to play him, we lost, haven't we? So yeah, yeah and uh, yeah, really, like, yeah, hundred percent. We we have, haven't got depth at all. There's a lot of second row options that I could sort of say are on their way there. Uh, I could say sort of Matty Ashurst is potentially a player who could come in and around. The squad you've got um, Cam Smith who could potentially come in around Matt Whiteley, but these are all players we want big forwards, and it's just something that we're sort of lacking a little bit. Um, I mean, I think I'd happily take Whitley over Westerman, but then you, you like you said, you're short on a proper out and out sort of. Yeah. What about Mike? Why was Mike Cooper going along? And he's, like, I don't know. I, I, mean, I prefer Westerman. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I put a prop? Can I put a prop shout on there? A prop that's done phenomenal work. Um, I don't know if he's English. That's hold on. If he's not English, there's another man that could definitely do a job. Um, hold on. I just about to... Chris Hill. That was the man that I was potentially looking at. It's someone else at Huddersfield that I was just looking at. 
but I don't think he's English. Um, that's it. Chris McQueen. You're, he can play for England. Chris McQueen has played. Is an he's he can he's played for England, and he's very very good. Is Chris McQueen? Chris, he'd be a wild card, but he would. But he'd be better than Westerman, I think. Yes, yeah, well, I suppose Westerman's a wild card as well. Like and we said, we it's only one one wild card in the seventeen, but then the rest we can sort of who would we want in our squad? Yeah, I, I just mean it more because he's not part of this training squad, so we'd be asking him to like come to World Cup with little to no. But he, but the thing is, it's not like he's it's not like he's playing outside of England. He knows all the players he's with. He's he's playing he's playing a lot for Huddersfield, who obviously they're going to have McGilvery in there. They're going to have players that are are going to be helping out on training, like training up against them and stuff. The, the lads are very good. He's, he's been named in Australia's Four Nations squad before, with obviously not playing games, played six times for Queensland. He's, he's, not, he's not a bad player. If you don't play State of Origin, if you're not a bad team. Do you know what I mean? I, I, this, I think this is a great call. I, I'm yeah. happy to put he was, he was called up to the England squad um, after rejecting an approach. He, so he was called up in 2013, but rejected an approach because he wanted to play State of Origin. But then he played in 2017 under Wayne Bennett in a test against Samoa. Like, in realistically, he would have had two World Cups had he not wanted to play one, not play State of Origin, and two, I think, been injured for the last World Cup. Also, um, Chris Hill is a fantastic option, actually, and he, he he did an interview where he said he hasn't heard from Sean Wayne, but he'll never retire from England. And that kind of attitude is just lovely to see. He's only missed five tackles all year. Uh, he's made one error all year. Like he he has still had a very solid. Season, so I think it basically comes down to a battle of the Huddersfield players. It's 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 it's, it's Chris okay. versus Chris, isn't it? it? It's McQueen or Hill, and yeah. and I think <laughs> Chris McKill. Um, I you know what? I'm I'm gonna vote for Chris Hill here. I think he's he he shouldn't have Warrington shouldn't have let him go. Um, I'm gonna go for Chris Hill as my twenty fourth player. Are we all in agreement? Do it. Well, I mean, to be honest, I would take McQueen just because I feel like Hills had a shot at England. Was you know he wasn't the he wasn't a game breaker, he wasn't a game winner. Uh, and whereas I can, I, can I can I just point out we haven't decided to unretire James Roby and he's not in the squad. <laughs> well, I feel like it's yeah, no. Unretired by now. I'm putting he? Roby in the same category as Radley. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> if he's available, bit... like yeah. All right then. So Toby, it's your call. It's Chris Hill or Chris McQueen, and then I've gone Hill. Toby, uh, Robin's gone McQueen. I, well, I think we said we wanted an out and out prop, and I think that's what Chris Hill is. Um, however, if you wanted me to just weigh up the two of them for the potential they could bring to England, then I think McQueen's probably a player who need, who would have more more difference to offer in an England shirt, which is something that Robin's really yeah. got me convinced by. Yeah. But it's that, like, in terms of the makeup of the squad, uh, if a forward gets injured, you probably want Hill to be the one to come in to replace them. But as an option for, oh, we're going to try something a bit different this game, or we need to, you know, it, I think McQueen's the option. So... Yeah, and you know what? I think I think like you said, you've got Sutton, we've got Knowles, we've got big loose, we've got big loose forwards who could play, who could do a shift at prop. And I think you know what? I, I will switch. We'll go with Chris McQueen. Um, so we'll run down one to twenty four. This is roughly what I think squad numbers will be. So and we've agreed on a starting thirteen. We've got our bench, and then we'll go from there. At full back, we've got Sam Tompkins, uh, who probably capped in the side under Sean Wayne's sort of. He's chosen him. Um, on the wings, you've got Jermaine McGilvery and Tom, Tommy Makinson with Oliver Gildart and Herbie Farnworth at centre. Your halfback pairing of Jake Connor, who is our wild card in the starting set or the 17 man squad alongside Jackson Hastings. Uh, props self explanatory Luke Tompkins, Alex Wormsley with Daryl Clark leading the forward pack at uh, hooker. John Bateman and Liam Farrell with your loose forward with Ryan Sutton at loose. Uh, sorry, Bateman and Farrell at second row with Ryan Sutton at loose forward. 14, Wellsby, 15, Whitehead, Burgess at 16, and Aledski at 17. Um, Hardacre in the 18, Lomax in the 19, Williams at 20, McShane in 21, and then uh, Curry, Knowles, and McQueen at 22, 23, and 24. Um, that, that is a solid 
sort of solid squad. Is that a World Cup winning squad though? No. Wayne knows how to coach him. It can be because the Aussies that like Australia have basically like not even cared about their squad. You know, they get the Australian well, team gets no attention whatsoever. They don't. They haven't got together as a team. They haven't even thought about who should we maybe be picking to train for us. Um, yeah, know, I think that and at the moment. All that's happened in Australia is New South Wales and Queensland are just hating each other and building up a bigger and bigger hate for each other and they're never coming together as a whole Australia team. Yeah. I think there's potential that psychologically this England team could be very strong under Wayne and yeah. that could actually be a huge factor. Yeah, it is all down It is all down to Sean Wayne, isn't it? It's a, there's a, it's a slim chance. I reckon this strategy of going for something different might just <laughs> produce a result on the day, but the truth is that the Australian team, the New Zealand team, could probably get off the plane and play us in nine hours with zero training sessions and still do us <laughs> over. So, and even, I, love, so I love the positive even, but the truth is we're miles off. Yeah, I mean, even even Tonga could probably do that with the squad that they're sort of putting yeah. together. And uh, and we'll look at those sort of squads in a few weeks' time. We'll wait for um, he can play for to sort of finish his research of potential World Cup squads and we'll look at, we'll use this England squad that we've selected. We'll, we'll look at what Australia squad they might have selected. We'll look at the strongest New Zealand squad possible and then we look at, okay, who's left for the Cook Islands? Who's left for Italy? Who's left for weather? We might even discuss the fact that James Cadesco will play in his third World Cup for, for Australia. We sort of mentioned it last week and I'll keep bringing it up because I kind of hope it happens. But um, thank you very much. That was, um, I thought, we didn't argue as much as what I thought we might this week, which was quite good. Um We'll be back next week for a, a more normal show. We'll give you a story of the round, player of the round, Hall of Fame, badge rating, set of six, etc. Um, we will update a set of six sort of scoreboard in the next few days once I've got a lot of my uni stuff out of the way. Uh, boys, thank you very much for joining me again uh, on a Tuesday night. Um, let's look forward to it. Less than 200 days to the World Cup. Um, Challenge Cup final um, coming up next weekend. So we'll, be a ma- we'll have a massive... Challenge Cup final preview and 1895 Cup sort of roundup in terms of who we think will win that game. It's probably going to be quite. It's going to be quite obvious. I think it might be Lee, um, or it might even is it is it Lee Fev in the final? Yeah. So it might even it might be Lee. It might be Fev. It's probably going to be one of the closest games we see all season, um, especially at especially at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. So thank you all very much for listening. Thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, follow. Do whatever you have to do. Get the word out there. We won't stop making podcasts until, well, whenever we decide to. Um, but we won't stop making podcasts this season. We'll we'll be with you right up until the end of the Rugby League World Cup. And we'll probably just run straight through to the season, seeing as there's only like a two-week break. Um, I've been Brad. That's been Toby. That's been Robin, who you can't see tonight. So And he did apologise at the start. And we've been the Biff Rugby League podcast. And we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.